Hi. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> awesome. How's it going? Not too bad. How are you? Doing well. Good morning. I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, it's such a pleasure to finally be speaking to you in person. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've seen you so much online. <laughs> no, but um, I'm so grateful. Like, so I've never really idolized celebrities. I've never been someone who follows media or TV, but like watching your channel, watching Dr. Dre, watching like James Walsh. Um, I love you guys so much that this is, you know, I'm happy to speak to you as a friend, but I'm also like slightly fangirling. So yeah, oh, really me too. <laughs> <the> time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I know that you're a PhD in chemistry and I'm so inspired by that. Um, I guess you know, I have some thoughts on fragrance in cosmetics, but mm. I've seen so many people demonize fragrance, which I understand, mm. but I also mm. feel like it's not the devil, um, you know, but I'd love to get your honest opinions on it, you know, and just share those with our audience to help, you know, stop the fear mongering um, and yeah. bring clarity to the situation. Well, as far as fragrance goes, Michelle, um, what are some of your high level opinions on fragrance and skincare? So I think fragrances in general are fine if you're not sensitive to it. If you put it on your skin and you get a reaction and it's a highly fragranced product, then there's a good chance that you are sensitive to fragrance and you should like a safe rule of thumb would be just to avoid products with fragrance. But there are 3000 different fragrance ingredients. Only about 200 of them have been associated with skin reactions. Some of those 200 are quite common. So if you see fragrance on a product, it is quite possible it contains them, but there are lots of fragrances that aren't associated with skin reactions and people are probably okay to use them even if they've reacted to another fragrance. That makes sense. So, you know, if you have a predisposed issue with it, obviously, mm -hmm. if you're allergic to shellfish, don't eat shellfish, right? Yeah. That kind of principle. Um, yeah, but if you become reactive, you can cut it out, but understand that it might be just a small component of that. Okay. I repeat myself sometimes to make sure that I fully understand what's being said. <laughs> um, so your Instagram post made a really good point. Why do you think that fragrance has become such a hot topic in skincare these days? And uh, why do you believe that that might not be fully justified or is fully justified? So I think early on in skincare, some people realized that if they cut out fragrance products, their skin performed a lot better. So they probably had a fragrance sensitivity. And I think they tried to generalize that to everyone. So I think maybe there was a bit of cherry picking. They started looking up problems with fragrance and they found lots of papers about problems with fragrance because if you Google that, that's what you're going to get. Um, so I think they generalized it even though it's not necessarily a blanket rule. I think also the fact that dermatologists tend to recommend this as a rule of thumb, it is a really good rule of thumb. It's a nice safe way to get products that will probably work for your skin. Um, so I think people thought that that rule of thumb was based on the fact that everyone is sensitive to fragrance rather than just being a good safety sort of rule. Another problem is that older products tended to have a bit more fragrance and they tended to include more fragrance allergens. These allergens are labeled in the EU and Australia, but not in the US. And I think that is actually a problem. So in the EU and Australia, you have to label them if they're above a certain percentage. And so people who are sensitive to them can easily pick them out but that's not the case in the US. And I think that should really be changed. I fully agree. As someone who lives here, I, you know, look at other countries and I'm just like, wow, why can't we get it right? <laughs> yeah. Even when it comes to just sunscreen, I know there's so many, you know, chemical filters like available in Korea yeah. and stuff like that. I'm yeah. like, why, why, this is why we can't have good things. Some fragrances do contain a blend of different ingredients. And I understand that this can help manufacturers keep their trade secrets or make it so that mass spectrometry, you know, can't fully identify how to recreate a product or reverse engineer it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are also alternate uses for fragrance, such as having, um, having some compounds that are antibacterial or antimicrobial, or, you know, even certain essential oils that can be potentially anti-inflammatory. What are your thoughts as to why some of these small amounts are included and do you agree or disagree with that? So like specifically phenoxyethanol, um, it is a preservative, but it's also an aromatic or a volatile substance and it could be considered, you know, a fragrancing agent for some people. Um, what are your thoughts on compounds like this? So I think it's important to remember that the dose makes the poison. So that means 
if you have something at a low enough concentration, even if it's harmful at a high concentration, then having a low concentration is okay. And this concentration is different for every substance. So an example in skincare would be something like retinol. Um, if you put retinol on your skin, 1% is enough. Like it will, if you're not used to it, it will probably burn your face off. But if you have something like glycolic acid and you have 1%, that's probably not going to do very much. So it's the same sort of idea with different doses of other chemicals too, like phenoxyethanol, like you said. Um, at 1%, it's probably not doing anything. If it's included as fragrance, like in, as part of the fragrance blend, then it's probably going to be way lower than 1%. So your skin probably won't even detect it. That's so true. And I'm so happy you brought that up. Even thinking of Botox, like one of the most toxic substances yeah. in the world, like it'll kill you. But we inject it into people's faces as a muscle paralyzer to stop. And it's a really setting. safe thing as well. And it's so it's safe, right? one of right? the safest treatments, yeah. Yeah, so you're so right. Like the, the, the dose makes the poison, absolutely. Um, terpenes, especially in essential mm -hmm. oils. Terpenes are often cited as being irritating. Um, any thoughts on these? And for example, why terpenes might be helpful if they're used you know, in an antioxidant formula versus when they can be irritating. So terpenes are plant compounds that are made from what are called isoprene units. These are like little Lego building blocks that plants can use to make tons and tons of different compounds. Just like Lego, you can make all sorts of things with them. And so there's a huge variety in the sorts of structures you can get. Um, because they are made by plants and they're so common in all plants, that's why there's so many different ones in things like essential oils. But there are much bigger compounds that are terpenes as well. So beta carotene, for example, which is vitamin A in carrots, that's actually a terpene. Um, squalene, that's another terpene. The reason they tend to make good antioxidants is that, I mean, firstly, there's the fact you can make so many things out of them, so you can make antioxidants. Um, also, double bonds tend to make good antioxidants as well because they're good at soaking up extra electrons. And that isoprene unit, that Lego building block, has a double bond in it. So yeah, so squalene, for example, tons of double bonds, really good at being an antioxidant. Bisabolo as well, that's another um, really good antioxidant that's a terpene. And I think the word volatile, it's a little bit confusing because I think in um, everyday life, we think of the word volatile as something that's really reactive, but in chemistry, it means something that just evaporates easily, even if it doesn't react with anything. So um, in terms of volatility, because the isoprene unit's really small, a lot of the time, the compounds that plants make from isoprene units are still really small, and small things tend to be more volatile. So that means, yeah, a whole bunch of them are volatile, things like limon, li, linalool, limonene, um, all of those um, plant allergens are really volatile, and they smell really nice, which is that why they're sense. in product. Yeah. So you can smell them, yeah, exactly, but it's not like they were put in there as a fragrance ingredient. Perhaps it was an antioxidant ingredient. That's a really, really good point, and I appreciate you helping break that down. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, Michelle, any insight to the maximum amount of fragrant ingredients that are generally formulated into products? This depends so much, um, because some fragrance compounds, like your nose detects a tiny bit and sends a strong signal. Some things you have to smell a lot of. It's a little bit like food, like some food like bread, you have to really shove your face in it. Some food like maybe someone peeling a lemon, you can detect that from across the room. Same idea with fragrances. But in general, with most fragrance compounds in um, something like a face cream, it'll be a hundredth of a percent. So it'll be like one part in 10,000. Um, really, really small amounts, one drop in a whole tub of face cream. With something like a soap, because it's a wash-off product, a lot of the time that becomes lower, and because it's on the body, they tend to limit that at a much lower level. So yeah, something sense. like, I think soaps, usually the highest is somewhere like 2%. Yeah, and it's this idea that, you know, um, I'm a huge proprietor of turning and learning ingredients to understand what's in those products. And, you know, here in America, as well as Australia, things are listed by order of concentration. Mm -hmm. But I've seen some people seeing fragrance as like the fifth ingredient and saying, ah, oh, this has like 50% fragrance. I was like, well, wait a minute. You know, if you break that down, maybe the bulk of this product is water. It's a toner. So 99% or 90% of it is water. That fragrance yeah. is still making up less than half a percent. Um, you know, yeah. but there is ambiguity with how manufacturers can kind of put that on the label, mm -hmm. which just makes it more confusing for all of us. Yeah. But <laughs> So fragrances on a more technical level are volatile organic compounds. Um, this one study in 2008 showed that exposure to lemonine from peeling an orange uh, in the atmosphere, just in your kitchen, is actually greater than using lemonine scented cleaning products. 
Um, do you have any opinions on this or any thoughts about the physics and chemistry of volatile organic compounds? Um, volatile organic compounds are compounds that are carbon-based, that are volatile, that means they evaporate easily, which is what you need in a fragrance. So for you to smell something, that molecule has to make it from your product all the way up to your nose, and then it has to bind to a smell receptor. So to do that, it has to be able to evaporate, otherwise it stays as a solid, like, I don't know, a piece of plastic or something, it's just a lump. Um, in general, if it's a smaller compound, it's going to be more volatile, bigger things evaporate much less easily. So yeah, in general, fragrance compounds are going to be small um, carbon-based molecules. And because they're small, that's actually part of the reason why some of them are so allergenic. If they're small, they're going to also get into your skin more easily some of the time. Um, a lot of the time, they don't get into skin, and a lot of the time, they get into skin and they don't actually do anything. It's completely dependent on the structure, and there's so many different structures that fragrance compounds can have. Um, with the orange thing, I think there is a thing where people think of fragrance, like listed on a product, as very synthetic, but that particular fragrance can use lots of, um, lots of chemicals that are naturally found in nature. So things like linalool, um, limonene, these things are often included in a so-called synthetic fragrance. But I think people are naturally biased towards natural things, like peeling an orange is safe, whereas using a synthetic fragrance might be dangerous. And I think that's an unnecessary distinction. It's not a true distinction. No, that's such a good point. You know, you hand someone an orange or a lemon, you, said that, you say it has vitamin C, it's healthy for you. Okay. You hand them ascorbic acid and they start freaking out. And it's like, well, wait, stand, stop. You're all good. Acid, yeah. <laughs> no, that's so true. Um, and I know this isn't like, you know, in the questions, but do you have, since you're, you know, such an expert when it comes to chemistry, do you have like any thoughts on, you know, whether or not some of these compounds combine with others, either in skincare ingredients or on our skin, you know, or if they are left in the sun, you know, such as uh, limonene, um, you know, if they can oxidize or if they can become a little bit more irritating. Is that something you've ever like thought about or looked into? I haven't looked into it a whole bunch, but there are definitely um, some of these ingredients, if they're left in the sun, like if you put them on your skin and then go into the sun, then they tend to turn into other things, which cause a reaction. Yeah, so that's um, the photosensitizing essential oils. Um, things mm -hmm. like lime oil, um, dermatologists every year in summer when people are out making um, tequila, tequila and limes, putting lime in their coronas, um, people end up with massive nasty blisters. Um, with sunburns. And that's, yeah, one example where um, if you're doing it in the shade, it's perfectly fine. It's just when the sun interacts with it, then it turns into just nastiness. Oh, ouch. <laughs> and actually just a question with that. Again, thank you so much for sharing. Um, would that always be through the process of oxidation, you know, through that UV exposure, or would it be heat from the sun? Um, or do we not know? <laughs> Sorry, I know that's um, like a random question. <laughs> Bonus question. Um, no, it's an interesting question. Um, I think it would probably depend on the molecule. So there are some reactions that happen much more easily with UV, some with light, some with heat. Um, some that go with heat don't go with UV, some that go with UV don't go with heat. Um, some go with both, some are faster in one and not the other. So um, I think, I haven't really looked into like all of the reactions, but generally um, oxidation is definitely a common one. Okay. And thank you. I probably won't include that, but like, it's just something yeah. that, you know, kind of <laughs> like polyethylene. I'm so interested. And I'm just like, oh, if only I had more hours in a day. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> also, um, you know, Michelle, obviously I come to your channel for such a great source of chemistry, of science-backed skincare, um, even of like the physics and breaking down the myths and the truths in science. If you were to describe your channel to someone who's never seen it before, um, how would you introduce it? I talk about the science behind beauty products in a way that everyone can understand. Um, I bust myths that are in skincare and in beauty. Um, yeah, a nerdy, nerdy beauty channel. <laughs> it's perfect. It's everything that we needed. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I know that you have your free exfoliation guide and your Instagram. Um, what are some of the projects that you're either working on or that you just launched that you're really proud of or excited for? I'm trying to work on an ebook, a second ebook. Um, I've got my first ebook, which is on um, basics of skincare, so sunscreen, moisturizer, and cleanser. I'm trying to work on one on actors, but it is taking a really long time because I'm checking everything. Um, I am also working on a video on fragrance, which 
hopefully I can crib some notes off yours on. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's so exciting. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine, you know, the time and research it must be taking to create that book, but I'm so ready. I'm so ready. <laughs> also, it might um, be a while. Yeah, well, when your fragrance video comes out, please tell me mm -hmm. so that I can like link it as well. Oh, I feel like that would be and so I'm gonna watch yours, to people. So. Sure. Mine is more, um, you know, talking about kind of the histemic reaction that happens in the body mm. with fragrance yeah. and then, you know, kind of touches a little bit on some of these alternate uses, you know, such mm. as phenoxyethanol being classified yeah. as a preservative, but it could have mm. fragrant properties or such as mm. antioxidants derived from plants could also be seen as a fragrance. Yeah. So benzyl benzoate, it's actually listed as one of the World Health Organization's um, essential medicines and it's also a fragrance ingredient. So that might be that is so awesome. interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. It also says it also says like it is a it is a common allergen or whatever, but like it is actually like one of the it's a drug. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's well, that's awesome. also yes. you know one of those things like at least in medicine, you know, if someone comes in with like a sports injury, there are times mm -hmm. that we put Ben Gay on it or those icy cold patches. Those are literally yeah, yeah. menthol. You know, there's a a T8 receptor within the skin that binds to mm -hmm. heat and cold. Yeah. You know, that can cause pain relief. And um, even camphor, you know, it has roots yeah. in acne prevention or acne treatment, mm -hmm. but those are also seen as fragrance ingredients. And so then mm -hmm. people avoid them, but it's like, wait, this yeah. could be really helpful for you, you know, and just because you're allergic to one compound of a fragrance doesn't mean that you'll be allergic to the other ones, you mm -hmm. know, and then it's unusual, but you could also grow out mm -hmm. of them, you know, or you could grow yeah. into them. So, yeah. And there's also the fact that I think people like, if something smells good, they think of that as fragrance, but if something smells bad, they're like, that's fine. But it's like, what you like, the way your brain like categorizes smells is not the same way as your skin categorizes fragrances. Like, something that smells bad also has a volatile organic compound in it, but you're okay with that because, like, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's yeah. such a good point. Even masking fragrance, you know, like in, um, uh, you know, they would say like unscented or neutral scented yeah. products, just because it's unscented doesn't mean it doesn't have fragrance. There's masking yeah. fragrance that's put in. Mm to make it not smell like ass, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and if it smells like us, then there's like fragrance in it. Nobody it's will use it. Nobody think of that's fragrance. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's so true. It's like even coconut has a smell naturally if you're putting, mm. you know, yeah. coconut oil into something. But, yeah. you know, I feel like there's nobody else who has your background, your experience, mm -hmm. you know, obviously your personality, um, but who's able to speak so eloquently, you know, about skincare topics okay. that, you know, we all have <laughs> questions on. No, like it's so appreciated. And mm -hmm. I don't know, like as a YouTuber, sometimes I feel like people don't always know what goes into it. Um, mm -hmm. But I just want to let you know, like the oh, work definitely. that you put in is it is consumed, it is watched and it is appreciated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you so much yeah. yeah I think yeah yeah people don't really know how much we do it's <laughs> they're like oh yeah. you, you make videos on the internet oh that's nice I'm like okay yeah that's yeah nice. it's like <laughs> 10 minute video that takes 10 minutes to make <laughs> Hi, editing Cassandra here. So Michelle and I continued talking about skincare and medicine and politics, and we talked about the struggles of being YouTubers, and we had a great conversation. But overall, if you wanna see the full fragrance video, I will link it right here. And please go check out her channel. If you do not already know who she is and what she talks about, she breaks down some of these science myths, and I cannot recommend her content enough. I will also link that right here, so please go click it right now and show lots of love, and always remember to turn and learn your ingredients and stay curious. And stay beautiful. Love you guys. Bye.